With the stage set for the premiere of Saturday Night Live season 46, Megan Thee Stallion kept us focused. He mentioned at the press conference, which I thought was quite interesting, that he's a black man. With these words from activist Tamika Mallory playing over her song. And as I laid and cried and hurt for Tamika Palmer and for Breonna Taylor and for Kenny Walker and for Janiyah, who we need to love up on. As I lay there and I thought about him saying he's a black man. I understand that. I understand that as a black man, how painful this is. I thought about the ships that went into Fort Monroe and Jamestown with our people on them over 400 years ago and how there were also black men on those ships that were responsible for bringing our people over here. Mm. Daniel Cameron is no different than the sellout Negroes that sold our people into slavery. Okay. Um, we're going to talk about black women. And um, how do you go about protecting black women? You know, there's something making a stallion. I don't like to get into this, this celebrity crap, but making the stallion, you know, she did a Saturday night performance and you know she put down protect black women she represented gunshots of uh, Breonna Taylor and also her herself being shot when I feel that that is sort of an insult to the Breonna Taylor's case because it's it's sort of two different things one person was shot by the police another person was shot by their uh thugged out boyfriend, you know, over an argument and things that. I'm like, it, it's still to be taken seriously, but, you know. Now, but h how does one go about protecting black women? I'm like, nobody has, I've, I've heard this before, but nobody has come up with like a method or a strategy or, you know what I'm saying, or, or a code of conduct we must go by, you know. Um, you know, I wouldn't, I wouldn't care if we went to Chirac of just all women just stopped, stopped conjugating, stopped interacting with men and so forth, and uh, especially in the black community, you know, maybe that'll do some good. But women, you know, and I did a video on this, on one of my classic Pinhead videos. I did a video saying black women are three times more likely to be shot and killed more than any other women of any other ethnic group here in America. I'm not talking about rape. I'm about I'm then just you know just uh, uh, being uh, catching a bullet. But how do we stop this when we know there's a large section of women that's attracted to men? Who's, who's addicted to the danger? You know what I mean? It's hard. I'm like, these thugs, you know what I'm saying? These dudes who live that life, they're not exactly lonely on uh, on a Saturday night watching reruns of Perfect Stranger like me. You know, when Friday night comes around, you know, they was never sitting at home watching Steve Urkel. You know what I'm saying? That Friday night, the mood is right. Gonna show you how we're still gonna have some fun. TGIF. No, their TGIF had a whole different meeting than me sitting around waiting for Steve Urkel or well, Family Manners to come on TV when I was a teenager. Um, so how do you stop? How do you, when you have clubs that just have these shootings and so forth and these spots where there's there's danger at but when you see the the dope boys out there with their nice cars which now they just have camaros and chargers now the whoopie do and you know what i'm saying the the, uh, the the women are just they're going to be attracted to that you know i'm like that you know this is uh i'm like maybe it's a biological thing and it's not it's sort of all women, you know, sort of attracted to these kind of guys. You know, maybe it's because of their, their masculinity, their testosterone and so forth. Um, just like a lot of these women are bringing these dudes home. 
uh, and live with her. No man should be living with a female. You know, and to be honest with you, that also goes into the Breonna Taylor case. No man, no man should be living with a female unless they married, unless it's some certain situation he was working and then he's just out, out of work. They were both paying bills and he was, you know, and so forth. But we know there's a lot of incidents where women are bringing men home and these men are around children. These, you know, some of these men are dangerous. They can't go nowhere else because they have multiple felonies. Some of them are, are, are child predators and so forth. But in the black community, it's just like, you know, anything goes. You know what I mean? It's like there's no code of conduct, no code of ethics and so forth. I'm like, people really don't look out for each other like that. You know, unless they're in a gang looking out for their homeboy. Now, also, there's something that um, the one of the Black Lives Matter activists said. I, I forgot her name, saying that she was referring to that that guy in Kentucky that wouldn't, pros wouldn't prosecute the, the three officers, saying that he's one. He represents like one of the men that helped sell us into slavery. You know, the Uncle Tom Coons and so forth. Um. I remember on a post on, on a, one of the fa Facebook pages, there was a woman who blamed black men for black people going into slavery and so forth um, because we're the ones that sold our people out to the white pe to the white man. You know, and I understand that a lot of women, probably a lot of black women, share the same uh, 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 sentiment. You know, and so forth. Um, you know. A bar of people being sold into slavery, that is an extremely complex uh, issue, a situation. I'm like, you can't just simplify it to, uh, oh, it was the black man who sold us and so forth. And we really want to think about it. We can say that men in general cause, you know, all the problems in the world, you know, all the wars and stuff that a lot of it is, is caused by men conquering nations and so forth. But the thing is, a lot of the women also enjoy the spoils of what men get. Hence, let's say an African chief was selling, capturing tribes and selling them for molasses. <laughs> you know, uh, that's pretty, you know, to sell human beings for molasses. I'm like, who got the better end of that trade? But if he takes his molasses to his African queen and his African queen also enjoys the molasses, then yeah, she's somewhat guilty. Just like the white man starting wars and conquering land. And if he brings his women and his women can go over there and prosper too, you know, that you know, they say a lot, what men do, they do for women. Um, um, during World War II, a lot of people don't know this, there was a lot of rape. A lot of the allied soldiers which were the French, the British, and American soldiers were raping German women because you had a volatile situation. These women was vulnerable. These women were running to the Allied soldiers, the ones that was fighting Hitler and the Nazis because the Nazis and Hitler was the bad guys, running to them for protection. You know, matter of fact, there's a, a, a documentary on YouTube, I forgot what it's called, and books written by <laughs> these German women or these women in these countries that was war-torn um, about uh, being raped by men, you know what I'm saying, by American soldiers. So I do feel that um, women, and this ain't me talking about some all lives matter bullshit, women in general, um, there's, some, there's certain incidents where women are very, uh, where they can't help their situation. You know, even, you know, in, in African countries, you know, Haiti, uh, but you know if you have a rapper and so forth or even an NFL player that's being that has had sexual assault charges against him and he comes into town he's still gonna have women flock to his hotel dressed up scappy trying to get into the hotel room trying to get to the after party what is what is men gonna do what are we gonna do what are we gonna say hey no nah, man you're not going to associate with that guy. This guy has all got pending. This guy got open cases against him. You know, but you know, you're not. At the end of the day, you can't tell these women what to do. That's why it's going to be so hard to really protect them. So I don't even know what that means. Does it mean the average guy 
gotta run and protect them or does it mean that their boyfriend must protect them because you ain't gonna holler at a black female in front of their boyfriend they'll try to pop the trunk they're very protective of the of the female that they're with at that time you know because it's a manhood thing they don't want to get punked out i remember I, when i was at a gas station a female was um uh was that thought uh she was um cat whistling at me what, what was that phrase I came over there, her boy, I didn't know she had a boyfriend, her boyfriend come out to gas station and said, hey, don't make me pop the trunk, so, um, but that's all I want to say, thanks for watching, and uh, never stop learning. I do consider Alaska a very dangerous state for women. The numbers would suggest that Alaska is a dangerous state for women. A study in 2016 actually found it the most dangerous state in America, and I think it is particularly for women in rural areas.